Hey guys, yeah. um, we're here at a really neat um, pub. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> we're here at a really cool, uh, Eng uh, not English pub, a pub cask. Uh, cask is just called, I believe. Which is uh, a craft beer pub, and they got American stuff. They got McKellar beer here. They got loads of stuff. And I'm drinking the Bell's Point IPA. I'm here with uh, Christian. Yeah. Hi. And Mel. I'm drinking a hot And Kim. And also. Uh, one of our friends called Louis, but he's at the And also a guy who's Faroese. <laughs> yeah. But he ain't here right now. But, um, yeah, as I said, I'm drinking the uh, Ballast Point Big Eye IPA, and this is just a traditional West Coast IPA. Super hoppy, fresh and grapefruity uh, aromas in here. I don't know, it's a chicken. It smells oh, really right. juicy. Also, get some of that caramel maltiness. <laughs> oh, yeah, super fresh and grapefruity. Um, so I got a, a decent amount of malt, uh, malt backbone in it. Um, I've been wanting to try Balance Point for a while, so it's gonna be. It, it's really nice having it. Uh, this is definitely like a huge thumb up here. Manly, what about yours? Oh, it's very nice. It's, uh, it's, light, it's light and hoppy. Yeah, it's. Uh, what is it called? A hop head. Yeah, from Dark Star, which is one of the exactly. upcoming. It's very new upcoming. Things. It's so underground that even hipsters haven't heard of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you taste? I have a almost like citrusy, uh, fresh flavor with a, a very hoppy aftertaste. But those two combined is just a what? Like, would you give it a thumbs up, thumbs to the side, thumbs I down? I don't give a numeric numerical value. I've told you that on several occasions. Okay, but that's not a numerical it's value. It's good. Okay, let's say it that way. And Christian here is drinking, what was it called? It's a Oscar Wilde from Dark Star as well. Yeah. And um, it's like a regular porter, caramel and dark, and it's just great. I love this dark, dark flavor beer. Yeah. yeah, this definitely gets a two thumbs up. Nice. Awesome. You want to talk a little about your beer? Kim? Uh, nope. Okay, <laughs> that's alright. Well, guys, uh, we're probably going to see you sometime later. I don't know if I'll have more beer. I probably will because they got such a huge selection. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Cheers. Hello, everybody. I am drinking a short brew soft parade with a mixture of four different uh, berries, which is very, which is very fresh and very delightful. It's almost like a summery brew. <coughs> the taste is very sour when you first uh, when you first get it in, but. If you swill it around and then swallow it and really taste it, let the berry flavor th flow out, it's uh, much more mild and delicious. So a nice spring, maybe summer brew? No, more of a summer. Much yeah. more of a summer than a spring. It's more of a nice hot summer day, just chilling with one of these in the backyard. Bass pumping, bitch, <laughs> bitch jumping, you know. <laughs> You know how it goes. Yeah, cool. And uh, uh, Christian, you, you're drinking the... Nine uh, uh, Porter from uh, Norway. And it's uh, much darker than uh, the last Porter I drank. And it's just like black, almost like a black beer. And very creamy and strong in, in its taste. Like, just... Rah! <laughs> taste. That, that's how I can describe describe it. Okay, how, how about Very you? Yeah, yeah. love luck same. Yeah. It's, it's a, the it's southern tea. It's a bit much stronger. And yeah. lots more bitter. It's the southern tea chocolate Louis is drinking. Yeah, yeah. It, it's so dark you can see, you can see the sunlight through. It. No. What, what do you think about it? It's so strong and it's like yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm getting drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 11 percent. Yeah, 11 percent. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, I'm drinking the Stone Sublimely Self Righteous. Uh, I was quite surprised to find this brew. <laughs> I've been wanting to try this for a while. It's a flag IPA on 8.7% alcohol. And yes, I am a drink. I am drinking a bomber by myself. But I'm on vacation, so that's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a. Uh, it smells very, very, very hoppy. It's of course because it's a black IPA. You know what? Metal is gonna film me. It smells very, very hoppy. A lot of grapefruity notes, but you still get like that roasted maltiness to it. But it's not as dominant, especially because the beer is still slightly cold, but like a dark roasted malt, maybe a licorice note in there, maybe it's like coffee. But a lot of grapefruit as well. It's just like a typical West Coast IPA kind of aroma. 
Yeah, and the, like the mouthfeel is creamy. It's the, got the dryness of an IPA. It's got loads of grapefruit. Grapefruit, grapefruit, grapefruit. <laughs> balances out to the roast. And after the roast, yeah, it's just like a slight coffee note. And it's it's a really nice brew. So for me, it's like a huge, huge thumb up. This is one of the best uh, uh, black IPAs I've had. That that's, This is really good. So guys, uh, we might be back later with another beer. Depends on how drunk we are after these. But uh, cheers. Hello, internet. My name is... Well, you can't pronounce it. I'm drinking a <laughs> short brew, Chinchi in the Rye, which is a... Hilarious pun on Catcher in the Rye, written by J.D. <laughs> Salinger. J.D. Salinger. And uh, the depiction of the ginger in what I assume is rye is the boy who's terribly mangled in a car accident. <laughs> um, well, we're not analyzing bottle labels, we're analyzing beer. I apologize. So let's get to the beer, man. Yes, anyway, Ginger in the Rye, which by the title, or the label, you could have, you could have assumed that it is ginger mixed with rye. And you'd be right. But the smell... You can smell the ginger and or the rye, which is extremely surprising, because you thought that there would be a, an overtone of ginger. But there isn't. There's it's a, a, almost a perfect mixture, and but the taste. Of, uh, there's a perfect ginger and then a rye aftertaste afterwards. It's not over it's over the top of the ginger. What is it? Uh, it's not over the top with the ginger as the crabbies we had. No, no, the crabbies was much too gingery and lemony. But this is a perfect combination of ginger and rye, which is the ginger, which is more of the uh, lemony, fresh, citrusy uh, flavor, versus the rye, which is more dark and heavy and filling. So that this is a perfect combination of both. So I will give this a non-numerical value, because I don't <laughs> do that. Okay. And uh, Kirsten, what do you think about your beer? You're drinking the McKellar and Brewdog... Um, Divine Rebel, which is um, aged in 25%... Uh, 25% uh, yeah, of the beer Yeah, it's, is aged in whiskey. Yeah. What was it? Was it whiskey? Yeah. Whiskey casks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got the significant whiskey smell to it, but also mixed with the regular beer smell. So it, it's very raisin and fruity, but the dark fruits, not, not the light fruits. No, 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 I would agree with that. It's yeah. more of a darker, rich fruit. Yeah. yeah. And the taste is very special. I cannot describe how it tastes because um, it tastes like nothing I ever tasted before because it's a mixture of the taste that whiskey has but with the freshness and carbonation of beer. So it's, it's a very special beer. Well, I think it's it's really nice description both from you and Melde because you're not as beer freaky as I am. So no. I think it's that's, that's we don't have the technical terms down. <laughs> we, we just describe but, as as h how we taste. Yeah, yeah. The, you are my new protege. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, what, thumbs wise, is it thumbs up it, down? It, it, thumbs up, even though it's uh, beer that you drink very very slowly. Yeah, yeah. especially because it's on thirteen yeah. point, point eight, eight percent. Eight. That's a big beer, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris is going to tell me now. I'm drinking the uh, old Rasputin uh, Imperial Stout from North Coast Brewing. Uh, this is uh, an Imperial Stout I've been trying, wanting to try for a long time, but I don't get North Coast beers. So uh, it's an Imperial Stout on nine percent, and we got it here in a Chimay goblet for some reason. I would have used a stiffer, but still, it works fine. Um, and it's like a really, really dark black colored beer. Aroma is very roasted. It's got slut. It's got slut of a lot of chocolatey, also roasted malt, coffee like notes. How about licorice? Yeah, li yeah. yeah well, I'll say licorice. Well, yeah. Louis also tasted it. Yeah, because <laughs> he really liked it. But it's got a lot of licorice, especially in the aroma, but the flavor. 
but it's, it's got a very creamy mouthfeel. It's got a lot of richness. Uh, it's actually not too, you don't taste the nine percent alcohol at all. Um, the licorice is more in the aftertaste along with the roast. But the first taste is like a creamy, dark chocolatey <laughs> taste, slight coffee notes. Uh, actually a faint trace of hops in there as well. Great Imperial stuff, I mean. Uh, Old Rest Putin so is definitely five, thumbs up. I would love to be able to get this in Denmark. So guys, we might again see you later with some food and some new beer. I'm having homemade chicken tenders with a homemade honey mustard, which is simply amazing. It's sweet. It's, uh, well, not tart because the mustard is not really tart, but it's spicy in that way, wonderful way that mustard is, but with the honey. But then mixed with this, an autumn maple from the brewery, from the brewery, in, based in California. It is just a wonderful taste experience. You get the beautiful fried chicken, which is, I mean, look at this, look at this. Oh, uh, this is real, <laughs> freshly deep fried chicken meat. <laughs> I love that. Fresh homemade honey mustard, and then a fresh, nicely cold beer. With what a taste of pumpkin, a taste of spices, and it's just, the taste is just, it kind of reminds me of October, which is kind of weird, because, I mean, we're going into spring, but this is fucking awesome. Awesome. What do you think about you you guys? You're, you're having the same burger. You're having an Angus, what is Beef it? burger. Yeah. Yeah. The beef is amazing. It's great quality. But I don't think it mixes that well with the beer. Cause yeah, because yours is a very big one. Yeah, because the whiskey taste doesn't combine well with food just as well as whiskey doesn't combine well with food at all. So don't drink this with food, but drink it as... Uh, after dinner drink. After drink, dinner drink. Yeah. yeah. After dinner drink, after drink, dinner drink. <laughs> Yeah, let's get Peter. Yeah, yeah, my turn now. Uh, I know this is very out of season, but I've been dying to try the Southern Tier Pumpkin. They got that here as well, it's awesome. Um, this is actually my first pumpkin beer. I've had pumpkin pie before, but man. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> um, the aroma on this is so pie like. It's got a lot of spice in there, like a, almost like a nutmeg. Um, cinnamon kind of, and then just that like it just smells a lot like like cake kind of. Really seriously, like a, like a like a pumpkin pie. It smells like a pumpkin pie. Well, flavor. I mean, it's, it kind of smells. It kind of tastes like a pickled kind of. Uh, Pumpkin. I don't know if you get that in the state, but we get that in Denmark. Kind of tastes like that, along with like a bread crusty, uh, almost like the crust of a pie. Uh, pumpkin pie, to be honest. I, I've only had pumpkin pie once, so I can't describe it that well. But it it kind of reminds me of that 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 crust you get inside of just not just pumpkin pies, but but pies in general because it's so bready and thick and sweet. And then you get a lot of the pumpkin, a lot of spices, especially like a nutmeg, cinnamon. Spice. It's really good. But with food, I'm having a mozzarella stuffed chicken breasts with sun dried tomatoes. Yep. Ah, let's get it here. It actually, it actually pairs fairly well. I know it's a short kind of beer. But I mean, when you get the breadiness and all, and you taste the, it's very succulent to be honest, the chicken. But when you taste the chicken and pair it with the beer, it kind of mixes quite nicely, blends blends nicely because it's not too overpowering with the sweetness of the the beer. Well, it's not it's not too overpowering with the uh, the chicken flavors. Um, it's kind of a good mix, but to be honest, I wouldn't have picked this beer for. Uh, a main course, maybe a dessert instead. Uh, to be honest, I would, would rather have a bit, like a, maybe a brown ale or a scotch ale or something like this, because the bacon has a bit of smoky flavor, I guess that would be nice with the scotch ale, but still it's a pretty good pairing. And the pumpkin is 
definitely thumbs up from me. I mean, that's nice. And, yeah, definitely. So guys, uh, thanks for watching this beer and food video. And uh, I guess we'll see you later. Cheers. And also, if you ever get the chance to go to UK, visit the cask. The cask is the best pub I've been to in my life. The best pub in London, UK. Yeah, I uh, haven't been to many really awesome craft pubs. This is, this is my favorite so far. This is awesome. The food is so awesome for a pub. Because when you think pub food in England, you don't think really quality food like this. So, awesome place. So guys, we'll see you later. Cheers. Hello, YouTubers. I'm drinking uh, Mikkeler or Mikkeler. Mikkeler. I'm Mikkeler. sorry. It's I'm Danish, you know. Mikkeler, yeah, it's Danish, but for some reason the beer itself is written in the in uh, Dutch. So I'm drinking Spontan from Bush, which uh, you you Dutch people would probably recognize as spontaneous raspberries. Yeah, spontaneously feminine raspberries. How well, no, it's them. just a Spontan from Bush. Spontan is spontaneous. Well, yeah, but not spontaneously combusting. <laughs> no, <laughs> carry on with the beer. Anyway, and <laughs> as you might have suggested. Well, not a suggested because you didn't suggest anything. So <laughs> fuck y'all. <laughs> but as you might have guessed, the the cherry, the not the cherry. I'm sorry. The raspberries in this beer. I mean, look at this color. Look up. It's actually the light. alembic, guys, style-wise. All right. Whatever. Uh, but I mean, look at the color. I mean, it just it looks like a raspberry field. And the smell is very. It is very uh, raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the, this is the, the part that's funny about this beer because it's very sour I and mean, it's very very sour, but there's this wonderful raspberry aftertaste, which is just wonderful. I don't know how many percentages bitter one. Let's have a look here. It is on seven point seven, almost eight percent alcohol. It, it is, it's all eight percent, so. Do you taste 7.7% uh, alcohol? No, I don't. That's the thing because I think I think it's because of the souring and really making the raspberries as sour as possible, and you can't taste the alcohol in it. So you know, if I didn't have anything about, get the fuck away from me! <laughs> get the fuck away from me! He's stealing his beer. He's stealing it. Uh, no. So I mean, it's probably because of the souring. Because if it was a sweet beer, uh, then if if they have used fresh raspberries, then it probably would have tasted the alcohol more. But uh, it is very sour, like I said, so... Is it know. good? Is it bad? What do you think? And no numeric value, because it's exactly. metal. So it's, what do you think? It's very special. If you like sour fruit... Or then, lambics. Or lambics, then go for it. But this is not for everyone's taste, because it is extremely sour. But it is raspberries, which is very sweet normally, so... And the style... Lambic is made with uh, via spontaneous fermentation, which is which makes it sour. So that also contributes to the sourness with sour berries, and you could keep on forever. But you like it. I do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, but you like it. I. Yeah. I find it peculiar. But you don't find it bad. I do. I, I don't find it bad because I mean, as a childhood memory, raspberries are sweet. So this being sour is kind of weird, but it's kind of nice. <laughs> and I'm also, well, I'm not very drunk, but you know, I'm getting there. <laughs> so this is the McKellar's Spontan from Bosch, signing off. And communication. Also, I mean, yeah. Peter. Okay, guys. Uh, yet another beer. Same place. We're just outside now. Um, it's cold. Uh, yeah. So guys, uh, back here, st still at the cask. We're drinking a lot of beer now, but we're trying to share it uh, amongst each other. Because if we just sat and drank, everything would be drunk. Uh, but uh, I've got here the Echtling Kerla Rauchbier Urbach. It's from Germany, from Bamberg. The traditional Bamberg smoked beer, and as you know, I love smoked beer. And the only actually in Calabi I get, get is the Mert Mert. Now this is the Urbach, which is a Bach, which has been smoked. It's on 6.5% alcohol, 
and man, guys, it's awesome. Um, the aroma, I mean, that's what I really like about uh, Bamberg beers, especially from the Asian Stinkella Brewery. They have this meaty, bacony uh, aroma to it. They are much more meaty than other uh, smoked beers. But except the smoke, you get a lot of like um, the bonfire note. That's also smoke, but also like a woody quality too. Worst case scenario, but mainly the dominant thing in the aroma is the smoke, the meat smoke, but the taste of the Eastern Keller Rauch beer Uberbock. Now my friends here. Uh, Melde, Christian behind the camera and, and Lewis had it. They hated it, all of them, because of the smoke. Now, smoke beer isn't for everyone, but I'm a huge fan of it. The flavor, it is so bacony. I mean, if you're seeking for liquid bacon, go with Eichelin uh, Kerala beers, because that's probably the most bacony, meaty smoke beers I've had. But it's very meaty. Um, I get like that baker, bacon kind of smoke. But not just that, also like a bonfire note. It puts hair on your chest. Mm-hmm. No, um, but that's quite dominant. I also get a slight caramel note, especially in the aftertaste. But it's like only there shortly before it's just dominated by smoke. But if you're into smoke beers, I guess you'd love this. Especially the meaty ones. This is on the meaty side and the woody side, because some smoke beers are more woody and bonfire-like than, uh, than Bacon but definitely a thumbs up for me. Um, fantastic brew. So, guys, we're gonna say cheers and see you later. Oh, uh, yeah, cheers. I am drinking the McKellar's US Alive, which is a Danish brewed beer. And it is, uh, you use, what did you say, bitter? The Danish hops? Uh, no, not Danish, American hops, hence the name US Alive. And the, the thing about the beer is the tribute to the beer card called Orval, which is a uh, Belgian Trappist ale. Just a, uh, they use the same yeast same strain, uh, they're trying to replicate the beer. This is an American uh, version with American hops. All right. And you love America, so. I love America, <laughs> and that is true. But I mean, look at this color, look at this. We take it up against the light. It is very dark, very, very bronze-like color. The smell is just so potent. I mean, it's like a oh my god! It's like if you if you if you punched a nun and you have sex with her, you know, it's like that kind of smell. I don't know why she would smell like that, but that's the kind of smell that I'm thinking of. But but more specifically, what aromas do you get? Like what aromas? Yeah, I'm getting a. Uh, I mean, just from the smell, not the taste, but I'm getting a sort of pine, very deep, very dark, very rich kind of smell, and then the taste. <laughs> oh, very rich in flavor, very fruity. But also it has that kind of, uh, not cranberry taste, but that cranberry aftertaste. Where it's very, very tart, very sour afterwards. But the first taste, taste sensation you get is very, very sugary and very mild and wonderful. Very berry-like. So, McKellar's Jewish Life, it's... It's a drink! <laughs> and uh, Kristen, he's drinking a completely different beer. It's also a McKellar beer. Yeah, my bird. Yeah. A McKellar. It's a Saint Little Hilbert, 2009. So. Age on red wine barrel. Yeah. So I did review this one myself. This is a nice Belgium ale, which is uh, in the taste, it's, it's, it's porridge, but with the. Hint of citrus. 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 That's the word. And the taste is, is more citrus than 
you would have expected from the taste. Do you, do you the taste the red wine barrels? Do you, like, like the red wine kind of knows of sourness? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. It's, it's also a dark one, but, but yeah, it definitely got that wine, winey taste without being winey taste. That was a bad joke. But yeah, yeah. But what you know, do you think of it, thumbs wise? Thumbs wise, it, it's like a halfway up the up upwards, so like a halfway up the upwards. What yeah. that mean? Halfway up, halfway between half and up. Guys, I think the guy. Ah. Okay, that's good. Well, guys, I'm drinking uh, the stone. Kelly Belik IPA, uh, that's the new thing at Snow. They make um, they make uh, Belgianized versions of their beers. Basically, they brew it with a Belgian yeast strain. Now, this is their IPA brewed with a Belgian yeast strain. And I've had the standard uh, stone IPA, and I'm so impressed that this bar got stone beers. I mean, I don't get it in Denmark. I only yeah, now I do, but it's only the, the Imperial Stout, and I shouldn't say only, but it's also, but it's a nice, uh, nice, uh, 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 sorry guys, uh, it's a nice, it's a pretty nice IPA, double IPA, um, I, I would say IPA, but the aroma has got the typical kind of dry hops, uh, very grapefruity, citrusy aroma, but it's got that kind of, Belgian, I wouldn't say breadiness, because it doesn't smell bready, but it's got like a more more of a funky, funky aroma mixed in with But still, the most dominant thing is the traditional uh, stone IPA. But the taste? Now the taste is very unique, or very, it's quite unique. Um, first flavors you get are the traditional stone IPA flavors. Uh, a lot of grapefruit, a lot of citrus notes. Uh, your basic uh, American West Coast IPA, but the aftertaste, you get uh, like the kind of Belgian type breadiness you get in Belgian beers, which is really nice, along with, a, no, I wouldn't say funk, to be honest, but I would say like a, this say like a, a, a as in the aftertaste of Belgian breadiness, but almost, almost, I, I would say just slightly funky because it, it's not as uh, like funky as like as I saw. But the dominating flavors are definitely the uh, the hops, uh, the grapefruit, the orange peel. Um, but still, it's got that uh, traditional kind of Belgian doughy breadiness along with the juicy notes. That's because it's brewed with the Belgian yeast strain, but actually it pairs really, really well with the combination of Belgian and American. Or, uh, yeah, seriously. I think it pairs really good, but still it's not, it's not the best IPA I've had from Stone. Uh, or Stone, the best IPA I've had, but still it's a really good Stone product. I mean, um, I like how it blends so good or well. Really nice, nice but, uh, rating wise for me, the stone Kelly Belique. It's a definitely, uh, it is, it's definitely a thumbs up, thumbs up. But it's not as good the standard stone, I'd say the stone IPA. But if you're more into building beers, I guess you'll like this more. Uh, Sure, but uh, but if you're more to the to the Belgian style, uh, very pretty beers, very funky, you wouldn't go for this. You're going for a traditional Belgian. But if you're new to Belgian beers and you uh, like IPA or stone type beers, this is a great place to start. So guys, cheers, and we'll see you later.